Hello everyone, my name is Marcelo Coelho Fernandes, and today I'm going to present the work that I did during my master's at PUC-Rio under the advisory of Professor Márcio Carvalho and co-advisor of Dr. Paulo Hoyer. It's called Experimental Analysis of Gas Condensate Flow in Perth Media. So to start, we need to think about the world energy demand. We have here two images from BP Energy Outlook, and in the first one we have primary energy consumption by fuel, and in the second one, its shares of primary energy. We can see the gas in red and the oil in green, and we can see that both of them are going to increase over the next years. But now if we pay attention in the second image, we can see that the share of oil is going to decrease and the share of gas is going to increase. Uh, the gas is going to be the second highest increase in the next years, only behind of the renewables energy here in orange. And in 2030, we can see that the share of gas is going to be 2.5 times higher than the renewables energy. Um, we are finding reservoirs with a higher pressure and a higher temperature. So in some cases, we can find a reservoir with a gas condensate. Um, and in this case, I'm going to explain the conditions that we need to have a gas condensate reservoir. So First, we need a temperature that is between the critical point temperature and the critical net term tem temperature. So we are in this region here in the middle. This black line over here will represent our reservoir. So at the top of this line, we have the initial reservoir condition. So at this point, we have only gas flowing because our pressure is higher than this dew point line pressure. But with the production, we are going to decrease the pressure and we are first going to reach this dew point line pressure. So in this dew point line, we will have the first droplets of liquids coming out of the oil. But and if we continue to decrease the pressure, we are going to reach this 95% line here in green and then this 90% line here in purple. And for example, in this purple line, we have 90% of gas and 10% of liquid. And if we continue to decrease the pressure, we are going to increase the liquid formation to a maximum point, and then we are going to reduce this liquid formation. And for example, coming back here to 90% of gas and 10% of liquid. Um, and because of that, we are going to have some production issues. We can see here in this image, the green part is the condensate that accumulates near to the well bore, and it can cause uh, the condensate blockage because this region here is the lowest uh, is the part is the part is the region of the reservoir with the lowest pressure. So it will reduce the production in reservoir, and that can lead to some some financial problems. Here we have two images to better understand this phenomena. Here in the first one we have. Uh, the condition of high pressure and high temperature. So we have the gas in the white part, and this one here is the porous matrix. Uh, the porous matrix, sorry, the rock matrix. And we can see that the gas can flow in the reservoir with no problem. But if we decrease the pressure, we are going to produce some condensate, and the condensate it is here in blue and we can see that the condensate accumulates and it blocks the gas path. So now the gas is going to have some trouble to flow in the reservoir. So the goals for this work are first to implement the pseudo-steady state method using a gas condensate to, uh, for, to evaluate the gas relative permeability in a porous media and then evaluate pressure, condensate form formation gas velocity effects on a relative permeability in two rock samples. So to do that, we need to think about which condensate mixture we are going to, gas condensate mixture we are going to use and which rocks we are going to use. So first talking about the mixture, we need a mixture with a gas condensate behavior. Since we are going to work in a lab, uh, we need a mixture that allows us to do that. So the pressure and the temperature can't be very high and it is better if it is a low complexity mixture. So we choose ethane and, and pentane. Here we have the phase diagram for our mixture. We can see that 
uh, in all points of this space envelope, the pressure is higher than 950, which is very good to work in a lab. And the temperature that we are going to use is 80 degrees Celsius, which is very good for a lab too. So we can see that with 80 degrees Celsius, we can reach uh, our condensate formation almost at 30%, which is very good to see the condensation, the blockage effect. And our mixture is 85%. Ethane and 15% and pentane. So, talking about the rock samples, we want the two rock samples with different porous media structures, and one with a homogeneous porous media, and the other one with a heterogeneous porous media. So, we choose a sandstone and a carbonate, and here we have two images from Imperial College for a section of a sandstone and one for the carbonate. In the sandstone, we can see that we have small pores and they are very well distributed in the sample. And it gets very clear if now we pay attention in the second image, which we can see huge pores and small ones as well, with is very heterogeneous porous media. Here we have the characteristics for our rock samples. We can see that both of them got almost the same size, near porosity, and the sandstone is 86 millidarcy and the carbonate 106 millidarcy. So now I'm going to talk about the experimental setup that we built to run the experiments. So we, as we can see, uh, here's an image for the experiment. It is a pseudo steady state method that we choose here at cylinder B. We have this uh, only the gas at high pressure and high temperature, and this cylinder A is the gas at low pressure. And here we have the gas, and here we have the liquid that was for that was that came uh, came out of the gas when we decrease the pressure. So um, here we have the core holder, which keeps our sample at high pressure. And we have a pressure transducer at the end and one at the beginning of this core holder, so we are able to uh, measure the pressure difference. Here we have a reducing valve, and this valve is responsible to decrease the pressure. So the gas is coming from, from, from this way, it will reach this reducing valve and it will reduce the pressure. And from this point, we have gas and liquid flowing together. So, as we can see, it is a closed system, so in no moments, the gas or the liquid, they come out of the experiment, so it is a single experiment. The same mixture that we used in the, the first experiment was the same that we used in the last one. And we can see that the whole experiment is inside of the oven, the red square and we could keep the temperature very constant during the experiment. And the injection will be at constant pressure and the production at constant flow rate. So how it's going to happen? We will set pump B to work at constant pressure higher than the dew point pressure, and pump A will set a production, uh, a production flow rate. So it will increase the cylinder A volume and it will drop the pressure into a point that cylinder B uh, will need to inject the gas to keep the pressure high. And we are going to have the system flowing in this way. And the, we stop the experiment when cylinder A is full of gas. And then we have also a protocol for us to do the mix again inside of the experiment and bring it back to cylinder B to do a new experiment in a different day. Here I'm going to show you a quick video of the, ex the experimental setup that we built. We can see that the whole experiment is inside of this oven. Here we have the cylinder of gas at high pressure and high temperature. The gas is will follow this path, it will reach this reducing valve, this one in green, and from this, and this point we have gas and liquid 
flowing together. Both of them are going to enter in the core holder. They will come out. The liquid will accumulate in this phase separator. I think we can see the liquid in this window right here. And the gas will go to the gas cylinder in the back. This one right here. So now I'm going to talk about the results that we got. Um, here's the single phase experiment that we use the carbonate sample. It's a single phase. It, it is a single phase because we have only we had only gas flowing because our reducing valve was not set because we wanted to evaluate uh, if the experiment was built correctly. So, and we can see that at low flow rates, we had a pressure difference S with a linear behavior. And if we increase the flow rate, we could see that we lost this linear behavior due to some inertial effects. Here we have the gas relative permeability for the sandstone and the carbonate, the sandstone in blue and the carbonate in yellow. And we can see that for low flow rates, we could reach close values for both of them. And as we increase the flow rate, we increase the gas relative permeability. That was because the liquid that was blocking the gas path, as we increase the pressure difference, we could vanish some of this liquid and increase the gas relative permeability. And we can see that both of them decrease at higher pre higher flow rates due to those inertial effects that I talked about before. And we can see that the carbonate reached some higher values than the sandstone. That was because of the carbonate porous media structure with huge pores and small ones, and its higher um, absolute permeability. From those goals that I talked at the beginning, we were able to accomplish them. And as final remarks for this work, we could see that a flow rate increased gas relative permeability when we got low flow rates, and the gas relative permeability was higher and in, in the carbonate. And at high gas flow rate, inertial effects were responsible for the reduction in the gas relative permeability. I'd like to thank you all for the attention. Also, I'd like to thank CAPS, LMMP, and Repsol Sinopec Brazil for supporting this work. Thank you.